And uh, my question is regarding the homeopathic preparation. So not the presentation, but uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, there's not much time left, but do you have something uh, published on that? Or can you comment something uh, more during the time we have left? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure the angle you'd like me to take on that. Um, I've, I've written a, a little bit about it. Uh, but um, the, the point of the homeopathic preparations, of course, is that uh, they, it's, it's, it's like they're pre-stirred. Um, you know, once we go through the dilution process, um, they become also much more stable so that we, we don't have to stir them before we use them. Um, you know, because stirring is a potentizing process. The stirring for an hour is is um, is is like the first potency, and I think it's after the fourth lecture in the discussion after the fourth lecture, Rudolf Steiner talks about how we can stir for an hour and then put it into a bigger container and stir for another hour and. And you know he he does describe that sort of potentizing process as a way of bulking things up, and so you know if we look at Lily Kalisko's work in Agriculture of Tomorrow, she outlines um, the effectiveness of the potentized preparations. Uh, those graphs that she gives does take a little bit of interpreting, but nevertheless she's giving the indications that that they are effective. And um, and so, uh, for me, the it 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 means we can also specialize things. Uh, Rudolf Steiner points out in the medical lectures that the potencies from zero to ten work on the metabolic system, ten to twenty work on the rhythmic system, and twenty to thirty work on the nerve sense system. So, for example, if when we were working on um, that aphid phylloxera that uh, grapes get in their roots. Um, we, we were wanting to strengthen the etheric activity in the roots. And so this is where, for example, we would use 500, but we would potentize that up to a potency, let's call it uh, 24. And, um, and, and that would then be helping to focus that energy more directly into the roots. Now, um, I and um, Rudolf Steiner outlines uh, that he mostly uses D potencies or X potencies, which is uh, one part of the preparation to nine parts water. And, and you put that into a bottle and, and you shake that for two and a half minutes. And, and then you get, you know, one part of that to nine parts water, shake that for two and a half minutes, and, and then do that again. So, so that's the process. And um, I got to say, I use a bit of alcohol, 10% uh, alcohol, as they use in human uh, homeopathy. And, and that keeps the water stable. Uh, so I've got I've got bottles that are nearly 30 years old now and nothing's growing in them. They're, they're still clear, um, you know, and that, that's to me the role of the alcohol. If you're making up a remedy just to use straight away on your farm, you don't need alcohol. You can just use water and uh, that'll work perfectly fine. Um, you know, it's just that where you want to keep it for any length, more than probably a month, um, you know, fungus starts to grow and then you've got a problem. Uh, so uh, a bit of alcohol just keeps everything sort of sterile the whole time, which, you know, I, I do take it that this is a farmer's technology. And so I, I'm not particularly clean. I don't make an effort to be clean because farmers aren't, you know, there's sheds, you know, farmers sheds. And so, so, you know, that alcohol helps to sort of keep a dirty environment relatively clean. Um, so, you know, uh, it's, it's interesting. And of course, 
When I use the homeopathic preparations, we're using 250 mils per hectare. And, and that, you know, in an orchard setting, goes into 2,000 litres of water. So that, um, you know, 25 mils of alcohol is going into 2,000 litres of water. So it's, it's very, very dilute by the time it sort of gets to the plants. Um, you know, on a pastoral situation, I appreciate that uh, less water is used. Uh, most of the people I know use about 500 litres to the hectare. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not too bad from that sort of point of view. Okay, so um, benefits is, of course, with potentizing, we can uh, be more specific with where we're uh, directing uh, the, the activity of the preparations, whether we want it in our nerve sense or into our metabolic or so on. Um, they keep uh, forever and we don't need to re-stir them and so I just have plastic bottles and, you know, they're very easy to use. You just um, straight away into your um, sprayer. Interestingly, the majority uh, of the people using my preparations are just conventional farmers, uh, mostly orchardists because they spray. And so, um, uh, and, and they put them in with all sorts of other things, you know, um, any any other agricultural chemical or surficant or, you know, uh, spreader, uh, they go in and, and they work just as well because our, our main product is actually a frost protection product. And of course, there's no lying with frost. You either get burnt or you don't. And so there's there's no debate here whether this thing is working or not. And as I say, that, that goes in with all sorts of other chemicals and it still remains effective. So they're, they're pretty hardy things. And, um, you know, I've, I find it a very useful uh, technology. Um, you know, and, and we sell these products in plastic bottles in one of the main uh, agricultural distributors in New Zealand. So um, th they're easily available to the people. So, you know, we we're getting over a lot of these problems that, that we have with biodynamics, which is, you know, the witchcraft, you know, the, the, the stirring, the time it takes to stir, the, the machinery you need for that. And, um, and, and of course, any kind of stigma that people have around that, whereas, you know, they just pick up a plastic bottle and put it into their tank and off they go spraying. So as a technology to get biodynamics um, into the mainstream agriculture, um, uh, you know, I think it's, it's a definite part of the process, really. And we don't have trouble with cow horns, you know, a little bit of 500 can be made into hundreds of thousands of litres of effective preparation. So it, it, it totally deals with that uh, problem of um, getting organs and getting horns that is becoming an issue, I understand, in the EU. They're, they're stopping people using these things. So to me, homeopathy is, is really an important um, development for biodynamics. I hope that thank helped. you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I agree with you. In fact, uh, uh, yeah, I was wondering about. I, I imagine you have done a lot of uh, research work around if it's uh, better D five or uh, D six or something like. You right. Know. The um, now on my website on the BD Max website in particular. Uh, there is various research that we've done uh, on various products. They're all homeopathic products, so there's quite a lot of different things there. But as I said, I, I really stick to what uh, Rudolf Steiner says in the medical lectures, that, you know, from zero to 10, 
for metabolic, 10 to 20 for, for the, the rhythmic and 20, 30 for the nerve sense. Now the actual uh, potency that, that in there, we, we did a whole lot of research um, very similar to Maria Toon, uh, not Maria Toon, uh, you, um, Lily Calisco, where we did grow the wheat plants and we used each potency on the wheat plants. And then we measured the lengths of the leaves and the roots. And we did all of those graphs back in the nineties. And so um, it's, it's based upon that work that we determined uh, which particular potencies we would use. Um, and, and of course, that's an awful lot of work. And, um, and, and so I still use those, you know, but I've since moved into chemistry uh, because we want to make the preparation stronger. And so um, if we, Steiner said, use chemistry, use the chemicals. And so I did a whole lot of work on that. And, and of course, there's 120 chemical elements. And so if we're going to run all of those trials on all of those 120 elements, it's, it's a bit out of control and an awful lot of bottles to look after. And, and so um, I haven't done that with those. And in that case, this is the one time that I actually use dowsing. So I'll determine that I want a, a remedy between 20 and 30. And then I'll, I, I use a very simple, um, you know, here's, here's 20, you know, here's 20, here's 30. Where is that potency, you know, and you feel a little dip. And, and so that's the type of dowsing I use now uh, to determine, you know, so I've, I've done the thinking though, you know, I've thought out what's the problem, what's the, the biodynamic preparations or biodynamic processes that I'll use to solve the problem and what's the basic potencies that I'm going to be needing. And then that final step of which one between 20 and 30, I, I ask the universe, I often get an impression of a number and then I, I will check that with that sort of kinesiology dowsing. And um, that's how I determine the specific potency that I would use. And then I'll make that up. Uh, so that's how I do that. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not in favor of a lot of dowsing. Um, you know, the, the, the point of biodynamics is that we're trying to make a conscious uh, spiritual science. And so we've been given all of this information by Rudolf Steiner to use, to work out what's going on and what we can do to alter the forces. And, and in a sense, he's challenging us to make this conscious. Now, if we're just dowsing and asking the question, we're not using those muscles we're not using those intuitive, uh, perceptive, uh, understanding uh, muscles. And, and if we don't use them, we won't develop them. And, and so it's, it's quite often, if you ask somebody that's doing biodynamics using dowsing, um, you know, why they're, they're using some particular preparation or what they're trying to achieve, they usually can't give you much of an answer. It's just that um, the dowsing said to do it, so I'm doing it. Uh, you know, whereas Rudolf Stein has really given us all these tools to be quite clear and conscious in our in our um, in our work, really. Now I see that we've we've come to our hour and a half, uh, so we're we're sort of coming to the end, really, of of this session. Um, is there any last questions? Okay, so um, all I can say is I hope this has been of some value. Um, I have recorded this uh, uh, session, so I will put that up on my website and hopefully this can add to the conversation. Uh, because, you know, as, as we said right at the beginning, this, 
planetary question has um, you know caused trouble uh, for the last hundred years and um, you know I hope my approach helps other people to um, bring some clarity into this question so uh, thank you for listening and uh, you know hope we meet again <laughs>